Hello, my beautiful friends. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, hello, welcome. I am Sherilyn and I am so glad you found me. If you're not new here, welcome back. Thank you for joining me every single upload. I love and I appreciate you so much. And I, I hope you do know like how much I freaking love and appreciate you, especially when I want to share and talk about, you know, different things than just like a, a true crime video every single week. And I do love to sprinkle in some other things here and there whilst still keeping consistent with my weekly true crime video. I want to give a big thank you to our sponsor today, Audible. I mean, if you are not familiar with Audible, it is the home of storytelling. I feel like when people hear Audible though, they just think audiobooks, but they are so much more than being the home of best-selling audiobooks. They are the home of the most anticipated new releases, popular podcasts, and their own exclusive originals, which you can't hear anywhere else. And I feel like you know your top tier when you have your own originals, especially when they're backed up by huge celebs like Joshua Jackson, Samantha B, and Sidney Crosby. Like you're the real deal. And I just love that about Audible huge variety of content. I jump from my favorite podcast to book series and it's just all in the free Audible app. I don't have to just keep clicking in and out of different apps. I don't know about you, but when I go on vacation, I have a comfort book or series. The past couple times I've traveled, it's the Finley Donovan series. If you haven't listened to it, it's so good. It's a mystery, but also hilarious and super relatable. It's one of those laugh out loud series and that's really fun to do when you're on a plane. <laughs> We're actually leaving for Jamaica soon and I'm so jazzed to just lay in the sun, close my eyes and just have my imagination take me in the second book of this series that I've been waiting so long to listen to, Finley Donovan knocks him dead. So the first one is Finley Donovan is killing it and this will be the second the second book of the series. I can't wait. I've even pre-ordered the third book that's coming out in the new year. I have so much travel to do for work. So I just love that I already have that to look forward to. I can just pop in my little buds, decompress and just listen to the story. I've also been using the Audible app to catch up with my girl, Caitlin Bristow over on her podcast, Off the Vine. And I just love that Audible also has podcasts because it's really cool to just be in one app and go from the series I'm listening to to the podcast that I love to just hang out and feel like I'm with a friend even though she has no idea who I am right now, but one day will. Like I said, it's just so nice and cool to just have it all in just one spot. If you haven't checked out Audible yet, let them help you discover new ways of laughing, being entertained, getting inspired. If you're a new member, you can try for free for 30 days. Just visit audible.com slash Sherilyn V or text Yes, text Sherilyn V to 500, 500. Once again, that's audible.com slash Sherilyn V or text Sherilyn V to 500, 500 to try Audible for free for 30 days. Thank you again so much to Audible and thank you for making my upcoming vacation just that much more enjoyable and relaxing. You guys tag me in so much on TikTok. And so I did a couple of videos where I was trying to integrate uh, the true crime stories, um, of, like your viewer submission stories with some of the TikTok ones. But I think it kind of needs to be like they they both need to be in their own home they're both important and i want to share them and um yeah so we're gonna just today we're going to be reacting to the tiktoks that you tag me in and helping um some of these people and creators on their platform who might not have the the same reach and stories that just need a little bit more of um, a voice to get that and I'm going to make sure to have all of the links to the video in the description so that you can go and head on over, watch that video, comment, engage in it, and then follow them as well and support them. So, oh my gosh, some of the, these today, oh, you're going to get fired up. All right. So let's get started. Behind me is a photo of my cousin's dad hanging from a tree by a water hose in his grandmother's backyard. His sister got the call that a black man was hanging in the tree of his grandmother's backyard. She went over to the house, expecting it to be one of the roommates that were temporarily staying at the house. Instead, she found the roommate and instantly knew it was her brother. 
When she ran to the back, a police officer was already in the back and told her, you don't want to come back here. But by the time he said that, it was too late. When she looked up, she saw her brother hanging right here. His pants were pulled down, his toes were on the ground, and the water hose was not only wrapped around a portion of his neck, but mainly around his arm. His car had been wrecked, and he had a donut on his car. His phone was found about 15 to 20 feet away from his body. The Weatherford, Texas Police Department did nothing to protect his body from the public, nor did they treat it as a crime scene. His car was left at the house. The water hose was partially cut out of the tree, not completely taken down. And to make matters worse, the medical examiner ruled it as I was waiting for it. I'm like, here we go. We're lining up. Conspiracies behind who possibly could have hurt my cousin are getting out of control in my small town. Predominantly white small town. If you could please tag any creators that you know that wouldn't mind helping us shed light on the situation, bring awareness to what happened to him, and our end goal is to just get justice. I'm going to leave the rest of the video to show you a little bit about who Jake was. Okay, that's how we're gonna start off. Wow. Um, you guys, please go and head over to the channel. We had, or to that TikTok, um, we had to put different music over top of this video just so that we don't get a copyright strike. But um, the song that his cousin has playing is If I Would Have Known by Kyle Hume. And oh my gosh, it just, I, I mean, there's something about having like the music and the videos to go with it that just really hits home. But I mean, I love that she shared video of him and photo of him because it just brings somebody to life, you know, and, and it makes you feel like you knew them too. And I think that that is so important for a cause. And I know, you know, it, it probably is really hard for family to share some of those personal memories and moments because they're sacred to them. But it really, it really does help. And I'm looking at this video and my heart is just shattering because there's 86 likes on it and 23 comments and only seven saves and four shares. And please, you guys head over, go and send her so much love. Um, this man needs justice. Someone please help me find justice for my three-year-old who was, he did not deserve this at all. This was the last photo I took of him, and on July 18th of 2022, I got a call from his father saying that I'm sorry. I was so confused, and I did not know what was going on until I got talked to the doctors, and they said that my son was in critical condition, and they've been performing CPR for two hours. Now, at first, I asked his father what happened. His father said he choked on cereal. But when the autopsy came back, they said there was no signs of choking, but my son died from a recent brain bleed. And when I went into that hospital, his chin was missing. His uh, mm, mm. his chin was missing. He had a bruise on his head and a nice, nice little scar on his eye. And I was wondering, oh, Lord, his chin was missing. He had a nice little bruise on his eye. All types of shit. I'm not gonna go too much into detail with that. But my problem is now it's almost December, and the officers in in. in the officers and the investigators are telling me, oh, we have no update. All I'm asking is, can somebody, anybody, like, comment, share, repost, anything to get this word out? Because this shouldn't happen to him or any other child. 
I was going to court for over a year telling the judge, hey, my son's coming home with bruises. Hey, my son's coming home and he's not acting the same. The judge told me boys will be boys. Boys will be boys is the reason my son is not here today. Remember his name, Valen Salaveras. Don't let him be forgotten. There's a new law in Illinois coming up where a lot of people are going to be released starting January 1st. And I have a big feeling or reason why. This has not been figured out yet because they're waiting for the year to pass to let this just sweep under the rug. And I'm not letting it go under the rug. I'm not being quiet about it no more. So never, ever forget the name Valen. Justice for Valen. Justice for my baby. Please, someone help me. Anybody, just help me. My heart aches, aches, aches. I've watched that video only one time through before. I've You have tagged me in this so many times and have tried to re-watch it. It, 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 it kills, it, you guys know how much anything involving children just affects me and to hear this mom begging for help. But it's like, there's, I don't know, like each, you know, when I watched it last time or each time I try to watch it all the way through, there's like just something more that I catch and get infuriate and more infuriated on. Um, I, I, I want to help so much. Um, this TikTok has gotten a lot of engagement and it needs to continue to keep getting engagement because like she says, there, there is an easy way for um, when that dust settles to things to just be forgotten and, and left alone. And just because there's momentum in something doesn't mean that that's necessarily going to get answers. I just want you to know that I have emailed her on the email that she has on her TikTok. I don't know if that's something that she checks often just to offer any support that I can and how we can help. So I will keep you updated on that. But as of now, I haven't heard from her and I, I can only imagine, you know, like maybe the amounts of emails that she's getting, it could be lost or that she just isn't ready to talk about everything right now so um you know do what you can engage in the tiktok with her maybe let her know that i'm here in her inbox if she's missed it um i would love to get this little man's story out there i mean oh my gosh when you look at his face i just like i just want to freaking squish his little cheeks i oh my god this mom tiktok i need your help to make this go viral we need to elevate PFC Denisha Montgomery Smith's name. My sister, Denisha Montgomery Smith, she was on a rotation in Germany for nine months, but she only made it to eight months. During her stay... I, I'm, you guys, again, this is another one that I've been tick, uh, tagged in off often. Um, there are some on here that haven't, I've seen all this. This is just, I'm saying you're going to get like really fired up too. I mean, all of them fire you up, but I, I, I just don't even... I, I don't even have words to accurately say. Like, how does this stuff happen? Like, just like so blatantly in our world. And at what point is the right thing not just done from the get-go? Like, why all of these, why do we need to spend the, like, you know what I mean? Like, go on TikTok and beg for justice and support and, and try to get these cases re-examined, especially when like all of us, I mean, like millions who see these things can see what's going on. I, ugh, sorry. I'm just, I'm venting. <sighs> she went to an amusement park with four of her battle buddies and she ended up getting brutally assaulted by all four of them. She made a FaceTime video call to us, the family, and asked us to record it. She said that she didn't trust them and she was in fear for her life. She also mentioned and literally showed us in a video that she, they were holding her mouth like this. And she said, I was literally afraid to die. Right after that video call, we, the family, made a call to the Red Cross to be able to get her home. That didn't do nothing. She stayed in Germany. They didn't do nothing to get her home. 21 days later, she's found in her barracks room. Not only did we get news that my sister died in Germany, but we also got told that she died by suffocation. Ain't it really weird how in the vehicle on the way back from the amusement park, she literally said that they were choking her and holding her like that? Their chain command in Germany also pushed out orders for none of the soldiers to talk about it, post about it, or talk to any of the family about it. But what's crazy is this soldier right here, he did. And not only did he post about it, but my sister pulled him over and his friends in the vehicle and she ended up letting them go without a ticket or anything by orders. But it's weird because he posted that and then he ended up well, in his barracks room, just like my sister. Now, a lot of people might think it's just a coincidence, 
But that's awfully ironic that literally right after he reposted my sister's story, after getting orders not to even talk about it, post about it, or anything, he was found. And they rolled his death from a seizure. They said that he died from a seizure, but he was found with bruises and beating marks on him. So how do you get that? Now, I know you might not care and this might not go viral or whatever, but this has to stop. We have to make a change. It could literally be your sister, mother, aunt, uncle, brother, whoever. We need to make a stop. We need to bring justice to PFC Denisha Montgomery Smith. Amen. I want to show you guys. I'm going to try to find it quickly right now. Um, I didn't have the tag, but I did go to her page after and I was able to see the video of that FaceTime. And I think it's so important because they're saying, you know, like as she mentions, um, when her sister called, she feared for her life because like, they were like joking around with her and like suffocating her where she couldn't breathe with their hands over her, her nose and mouth. And she's in fear. Like she called her family, made them video the, the FaceTime call to explain what happened, saying she was begging to come home. And then she suffocated. So let me quickly find that video. All right, I, f I found a clip of it. Honey. This is all I wanted to do. Mom, this is all I wanted to do. On July 19th, she made a frantic video call to her family and asked them to record it. Hey, Mom. Hey, Jada. Hey, Mom. I love you. I, I just want to come home. Like, Brooklyn. <sighs> she had serious bruises, open wounds on her body. Where's that from? I don't know. In this 12-minute video call with her family, she said she went with a group of military police from her unit off base to a water park, said they had been drinking, and on the car ride back, they assaulted her. They choked me out. Look, they did, they were doing me in the car. I was uh, gasping for air. I was like, I can't. bro, I had never been so scared in my life. I legit... I thought I was going to die in the car, bro. In and out of tears on the call, she vowed to report her assault the next day. I'm going to talk to CID tomorrow. And what, tell them that you just want to get out or what? I can't be here no more. I don't trust them. I don't trust my leadership. I don't, I don't want to be here with none of them no more. 21 days later, on August 9th, Denisha Montgomery was found dead in her barrack. Whew. Oh my gosh. Like it just makes you want to scream from the freaking rooftops. I, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. This is so messed up. Please go follow Denisha's sister's TikTok and follow along with this. Um, she ke keeps it updated and lets you know all of the ways that the family is needing support at this time. I believe the last update that I saw, they're wanting the FBI to take over and investigate. Uh, I just, oh my gosh, my blood. I can't even think right now. I'm literally just in, in circles. It's so messed up. Like I wish we could just snap our fingers and be like, hey, this, this was wrong, right? Can we stop doing that and do the right thing and just actually not have people killed by those they trust? 911 emergency. My ex-boyfriend is trying to break into my house. I'm not letting him in, but he's like tried to break down the door and he's trying to break into one of the windows. He put me in the hospital a few weeks ago and I've been trying to keep him away. I told him I was going to call. He's now trying to break in through the window. He's trying to turn me it open. Okay. Um... Are you, do you have anybody else in the house with you? No, I don't. Okay, does he live there? No, he does not. Are you still there? Yes. Okay. Uh, I, I don't have anybody to send out there. Okay. Uh, you know, obviously, if he comes inside the residence and assaults you, can you ask him to go away, or do you know if he's intoxicated or anything? I've, I've already asked him. I've already told him I was calling you. He's spoken before, but he's down my door, assaulted me. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, so... Is there I, any way I, you can safely leave the residence? No, I can't. Because he's blocking pretty much my only way out. With a vehicle, or...? Um, with a vehicle and with himself on my front door also. Okay, is there anybody that you can call to come over and help you, or do you have any friends? Um, he has sat there and destroyed my phone that had all of my contacts in it, because uh -huh. I have neighbors, because he's done, this, he's done this. I can't get a hold of my neighbors. I don't know what the phone numbers are. I just had to get a new phone. <sighs> okay. Well, the only thing I can do is give you some advice and call the sheriff's office tomorrow. Um, obviously, if he comes in and unfortunately has a weapon or is trying to cause you physical harm, that's a different story. I, 
you know, the sheriff's office doesn't work up there. I don't have anybody to send. Okay. And we don't dispatch for them. Um, like I said, it's an unfortunate situation. Okay. But I'll have to take care of myself, I guess. Well, you have every right to do that. I can't tell you what to do, but um, is he still there? What the fuck is going on here? Yes, he is. Okay. All right. Well, um, do you want to... Do you want to stay on the phone with me until we figure out what he might do, or can you ask him? Do, do you do you want to stay on the phone with me until we figure out if he breaks in and murders you, and then I can just have the audio recording of it? What the? F leave. I asked him to leave a million times. Okay, but he does not live there with you. Is that what you're saying? He does not. Okay. Has he lived there previously? No. Okay. Where is he now? And he's now outside my bedroom window. Does he know that you're on the phone? I don't know. I but if I can hear him screaming and yelling, I think he can hear yeah. him on the phone. I told him I was going to. Okay. He says he doesn't care. What's he doesn't the... have any he doesn't care because he knows that no one's out here and so <laughs> Yeah, and uh, like I said, it's definitely unfortunate. What's his name? Michael Bella. B E L L A. B E L L A H. And how old is he? He's um, 29. Is he a white male? Yes. Do you know if there's anybody with him? Oh, no, there's no one with him. When did you guys break up? Um, we have broken up five billion times, and I've been, he um, put me in the hospital a few weeks ago, and I've been trying to keep him away. Do you have a restraining order? I do not, because he, he's left would leave me alone until basically on the weekends and then uh -huh. he starts his crap again okay okay we have to google this okay okay i just like i just uh, she's alive I'm, I'm being really like i mean it is dramatic but i'm i'm sorry it's like i kept you on edge there for a second i think she's like i hope she's alive this incident i'm seeing this was posted in 2013 um Okay, wait, no, hold on. Okay, yeah. May May 23rd, 2013, after he broke in, he got in, he R-worded her and choked her. Oh my gosh, okay, so this article says, she's terrified, she called 911, saying that her ex-boyfriend's trying to break in, but in response, she was told that there's no officers on duty to help her. Where, what, where did this, Oregon, Jos Josephine County in Oregon. Oh my gosh, so, so they, the county had okay if this is making this is confusing for me so i believe it was like within josephine county sheriff's department they had cut a bunch of their staff and then the officers were only working from 8 a.m to 4 p.m monday through friday that's like trying to like i honestly my phone company has better hours than that what the heck okay and then so it was they want to trans they're saying that incidents needed to be transferred to the state police but if you transfer to the state police they still don't come out oh my gosh so that's why she was saying they don't have anyone to send there to you so after his assault, he was caught and arrested and I can't find any information, but I sure should hope that he is in jail. But guess what? It was a sex crime. So guaranteed he was probably let out in a couple of weeks with a warning to say that he was likely to reoffend and he'd be a danger to the community and his ex-girlfriend and no one cared. I'm bitter. So I'm definitely not the type to come and make uh, TikTok videos about anything. So if I stutter or anything, I apologize in advance. But I do know TikTok is a good way to get the word out about things. And here we go. This was Kiara Jackson. She was 14 years old from Princeton, West Virginia. That's where this case takes place at. Only 14, guys. She was just a baby. This is her mother. She, um, she reported Kiara Jackson missing on December 3rd. And, you know, she was, the whole time she was missing, she um, was on Facebook, you know, acting like she was just a caring mother who wanted her daughter to come home. She was get offer rewards for any information and everything like that. But this is the stepdad, you know, the man who was supposed to be a father figure to her. Um, it was recently discovered from one of Kier's journals that he at her for three years and the mom knew about it. 
But apparently CPS was involved before several times and I guess they just never found any evidence or, you know, people just don't do their job. And I don't know if the police were involved, but, you know, the police aren't always that good at investigating things like this either. So I think now the public has to take matters into their own hands and get justice for this poor little baby girl because that's the last thing that we can give her, you know. But there are now allegations that Kiara was pregnant with her stepdad's baby. And her mom found out um, either the day of, either the day she went missing or the day before, and she told her it was the stepdad's. But unfortunately, yesterday, uh, this poor baby girl, she was found in her basement, hung up like some kind of animal. It, they're saying that her throat was, the autopsy still hasn't came back to know anything for sure. But I 100,000% believe that the stepfather her and the mom helped and they hung her there to make it look like she committed suicide and just left her there for her poor baby sister to find her a few days later and we'll know more having more information whenever the autopsy comes out you know exactly how she died and all everything and if she was pregnant but she just needs justice I do believe she was and if she wasn't she needs justice for the years of abuse that she experienced. This poor baby girl thought she had nobody in her corner because the people, the one person, her mother, who was supposed to love and protect her the most, she failed. She did not. She just, she let this man come and rip this poor baby girl's innocence away. And just justice for Kiara Jackson. Okay, I really hope that this gets out. And um, yeah, thank you for watching. Oh my gosh. Wow. Um, I, I do want to say, this because obviously we're still waiting on results and all of that stuff but I do love the way that she just finished this video off saying that even if you know those assumptions we don't know like the cause of death whether it was intentional like self-inflicted or somebody else was responsible what she's talking about that was written in the journal needed to be addressed. I usually don't like to share things or talk about them until I know all of the information. I don't I don't want to send a lynch mob uh, of, of accusations that I, I don't know. After just seeing this now though, with even, you know, without having the autopsy report, just having somebody talk about the journal and what was happening and for Kira to be the one to write those words down. I definitely think that this needs more attention, even if just to bring it attention to law enforcement to look into this further properly. And that's how you do it. You, you put the pressure on. So I do want to just put a disclaimer out there right now. I want the pressure to be put on into an investigation, not um, at any individual's at this time. Warning, I'm about to talk about the MMIWG2S crisis and the recent news coming out of Winnipeg. Do y'all remember how when the entire North American continent was in shambles looking for Gabby Petito and how a bunch of true crime fans um, attacked indigenous women for daring to say, hey, it'd be really cool if you guys gave a fraction of this attention to the MMIW crisis. How indigenous women were shut down over and over again with, it's not the time. Is now a good time for y'all? True crime podcasters, web sleuths, because the missing and Indigenous women, girls, and two-spirit crisis is still in full swing. The most recent example being the news coming out of Winnipeg about a serial unaliver targeting four indigenous women. Morgan, age 39. Mercedes, age 26. Rebecca, age 24. Elders have asked that the fourth woman be referred to as Buffalo Woman until she is identified. Winnipeg Police Chief has openly stated that despite believing the remains of three of the women are at a landfill, there are no plans to search Brady Road Landfill for their remains. I'm going to repeat that. The Winnipeg Police Chief... Okay, repeat it. I'll let, you, I'll let you finish. ...chief has openly admitted that he believes the bodies of three indigenous women are in a garbage dump, but refuses to even try to find them. The police are also hesitant to call this a hate crime despite all four okay my first concern she she is nailed so much because I, i'm canadian and i have not heard about this i haven't heard about this yet what i'm speechless right now about like not about maybe mean i don't i don't watch the news a lot oh my gosh that just gave me flashbacks from i don't watch the news 
not the timeshare only. So that could be why I, don't, I, I try to stay away from the news as much as I can because everything that I do day in and day out in terms of work is already dark enough. But even though I don't watch the news, she is so right in terms of lots of cases that are just like plastered everywhere and you have no choice but to not see it. And I have not seen this yet. And for law enforcement to outright say, we believe that they're here and know a location, but we're not going to go and look. What in like... That is the most public spit in your face, slap in your face that I've ever, ever heard. Excuse me, pardon my language. All right, I, let's let this go. I don't even know where the F this is gonna go. More victims being native women and the perpetrator social media pages looking exactly how you'd expect. I want you all to imagine a police department saying, we believe that Gabby is in a garbage dump, but we're not gonna search for her. I want you to actually imagine the outrage and horror in response to that statement and then I want you to multiply it times three because that's the energy that we need right now. Look at them. They're not garbage and they deserve to come home and they deserve to have people care about them. Holy effing shh. I will be talking about this a lot more. Wow. Thank you whoever tagged me in this. I'm so sorry. That's my problem with the TikTok tags is once I take the the tag, I put it in my folder and then I have such a hard time trying to find who did it again. So I, I, I apologize that I, I'm not able to give you guys appropriate shout outs and appreciation. I appreciate you. Thank you for sending me these stories to help get them out there. Wow. Wow. All right. Um, I think we have time for one more, you guys. My name is Angelique Robledo, and the video that you're about to see is about me when I was 18 years old. Just a briefing, a woman came to my house and plotted to kill me from a C-section on my body to take my child, then burn my body with all the evidence. She didn't succeed, but I was approached by the Dr. Phil show in 2013 after sentencing to come onto the show and tell my story because it was something that I wanted to do. I wanted to tell my story to the world to help um, other mothers, to warn them, to show them that this is something that does happen. I explained to the Dr. Phil show what my priority was and they wanted to be a part of it. So I gave it a chance and I went on the show. Everybody always asked me, didn't you know by watching Dr. Phil, like how he was? Well, I've never seen the show before. So I went on with the intentions to be able to tell my story. The same day, everything changed. Nothing went as planned. And he basically victim blamed me. You, if you don't agree, that's okay. But that is exactly what is happening in this video. Since I posted this, I have been approached by numerous and numerous of survivors of people that have been on the show also, and he have had the same exact experience. This isn't okay. This isn't right. These other people that I'm talking about, I won't name, but I can tell you that they are scared to come forward. I've already came forward. So to me, it's like, eh, I already did it. So I'm here to be their voice also. I'm here to show you that this is not okay. I'm here to warn you that if you ever go on the show, this is what will happen to you. And most people regret it and end up crying their eyes out on the way home. I'm done with the mean comments. I'm done with the victim blaming. I'm here, I'm alive. And all your mean comments are nothing to me. First off, you said that you had a strange feeling about Cassandra but you still invited her to your home. Yes. <laughs> now you had an instinct and you ignored it, right? Yes, I did. You said you had a strange feeling about her. Yes. Then you said you even asked your mother if you thought she was weird. So it rose to the level that you actually said it out loud. Yes. But yet you stayed home alone with her when your mother took the boys to football practice. I'm just, I put up my trust into everybody. I mean, I know I shouldn't do that and I've learned from that. A friend came in, and then you said, I was worried. How do you ask a friend, are you trying to kill me? How do you, how, I mean, really You're though, afraid of you... hurting their feelings? Yes, I was. Let's I, see. I, how do you say I that could to somebody? Get killed, or I could hurt her feelings. I mean, but how do you really ask somebody, like, hey, are you trying to kill me? That's how nice you are. If the conversation has gotten to the point where that question is part of the dialogue, then it's time for them to go home. Oh my gosh. What the f- I haven't watched Dr. Phil in years, so maybe this is not new to people who still watch, but the, like, I have never seen a victim. This woman is a survivor. You should be standing up there being like, this is what you, you survive. What? 
I've never seen that. I knew of her case because actually I think somebody sent me her story. Maybe it was a viewer submission. It wasn't her though. So I, I didn't want to read it because I was wanting permission from her to share her story. And this friend like basically like groomed her because she was telling her family and boyfriend that she was pregnant and she wasn't and then was wanting to take her baby as her own. Um, yeah, and she she survived. She The baby's alive. Um, she didn't perform a C-section on her, but she admitted, like she got the friend to admit um, because she like tried to attack her that this is what she was, these were her intentions. So like how dare he make her feel like that? And then like as the audience is sitting there laughing at her and she's all she's trying to do is just go up there and s spread her story and be like, can you imagine? I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm rambling right now because my mind is going a million miles a minute here. Can you imagine if viewer submission stories, if those were approached like the way that oh my god I don't even want to call him Dr. Phil like what the f uh, why am I swearing so much? I'm heated today you guys I'm heated I'm speechless also I can't I cannot imagine hearing somebody's story reading somebody's story like you send me reading them out loud and thinking of it like that being like well you know like you didn't think to think this way honey you didn't think that maybe you should have done this you're too nice. You got yourself in this situation. That's like, I'm sick to my stomach. Holy, this, oh, okay. I need to, I need to go. I need to go make a, like a rum and eggnog, just like splash of eggnog heavy on the rum. <laughs> wow. Everybody boycott Dr. Phil. What a piece of actual human turd. I'm so sorry you went through that. Wow. Okay, that's it for today's video. If you would like to see more of me just absolutely losing my marbles, <laughs> um, tag me on on TikTok. I, I have been seeing them and I'm just kind of trying to go through them randomly, pick some, do the tags. Like I said, I'm so sorry if I don't um, appropriately shout you out and give you thanks for doing that. I just know that I appreciate you so much um, in helping everybody amplify their voice. And um, yeah, I suppose my blood pressure rising to extremes is definitely worth it to get justice for everybody who needs it right now. All right, if you haven't already, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It means the absolute world to me. I love and I appreciate you so much. I will see you in the next video. I will miss you terribly until then. Make sure to love each other, love yourself, and I will see you soon. Bye.